yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thanks. Um, up next, we have um, Florin, who was just speaking. Um, Florin is from UNICEF, I believe. That's right. Convenient timing since I just piped up. Um, so th thanks everyone, and thanks for uh, thanks Robert for the time. I think I, I uh, asked for sixty seconds, and you'll forgive me if I go for like ninety seconds, maybe, because there's three things I wanted to share with the group here. Um, so I'm with the UNICEF Supply Division. This is the group that procures uh, medical equipment for kids around the world and for countries and ministries of health and hospitals. Um, our focus is on regulated products. So it's perhaps a, a bit of a less better fit for open source solutions like what we're talking about here today. Um, but despite that, there's two things I wanna put on your radar. And the first of those is, so at UNICEF, I'm leading the development of a target product profile. And that's uh, basically a requirements list outlining what the ideal product looks like for low resource settings and, and working with industry and innovators to, to push the product in that direction. I'm just gonna turn off my video in case it's lagging here. Um, and, and that's important right now because there, there are a number of issues that are well known, um, which Neil rightly pointed out. And, and I think it's important to design to the appropriate requirements, especially if you're considering low resource settings that have power, environmental and uh, usability and, and that kind of challenges. Um, so there's already some existing reference points around this. Um, in 2020, UNICEF and NEST published a target product profile. I'm currently updating that and it'll be launched by September, October. Um, there's a UF, WHO UNICEF interagency spec that uh, sets out the specifications of what UNICEF purchases and, and other agencies as well. And so I would really encourage you to reference those two as things that, uh, that point out the requirements to shoot for. Um, again, especially for designing for low resource settings and I think existing concentrators really struggle with these already. And you have the opportunity here, I think, to make something that's dramatically better than what's, what's already on the market. Um, but uh, please use those as a starting point. And I'm gonna drop two links in the chat as soon as I'm done speaking that point to that, uh, the spec and the guidance and also the target product profile that was previously designed, uh, which again, I'm updating. The second thing I wanted to say really quickly is there's an initiative called the Oxygen Collab that UNICEF is actively part of um, this is an initiative funded by the UK government to drive innovation for concentrators for low resource settings, especially. And what we've been doing is uh, working with about 40 or so innovators and experts over the last three months in some workshops, um, deep diving into understanding the problems, again, in, in power, environment, uh, usability, and also identify known and existing, but also potentially new solutions for solving some of those challenges. And, and the next step with this oxygen collab process is we're sorting the best opportunities right now. And in a couple of weeks time, we'll be launching a number of open challenges that will be grant funded. And so this is an area that I think the, the folks on this kind of on this call right now, I encourage you to take a look at that when it comes out and, and consider participating. I think the opportunity here is for you to take part in, uh, in those open challenges that help run some of the experiments fill some of the evidence gaps or develop some of the prototypes that are needed um, in order to result in that better concentrator for, for low resource settings. So I'll put my email as well in the chat and I encourage you to uh, drop me an email. I'll add you to my list of folks that I'll notify when those open challenges are open. Um, and the very last thing I wanna say, and this is just my insight. I, I'm, it's not an official position from UNICEF. It's, it's uh, you know, feel free to gut check this and challenge it. And you've all been in the oxygen space longer than I have. Uh, before January, I was working in a different global health area. So this is a bit new to me too. But I'm just sharing something that I've learned in, in the last few months about the technology space around this pandemic. And that is that initially, I think this pandemic was thought to be the pandemic for ventilators. And then it became very apparent, uh, I don't know how quickly, but it certainly is at this point, that this is the pandemic for oxygen concentrators and for other oxygen sources. And this resonates with, with me at UNICEF because we actually don't have programming around ventilators because the countries where UNICEF works, uh, and I would generalize to like the developing world in general, uh, there are bigger upstream barriers to ventilators being successful, such as human resources and training, uh, maintenance, reliable electricity, but especially and importantly, access to high flow oxygen. 
So without oxygen, the ventilators, uh, I don't think have a, a, such, a, such an important space in, in a lot of these low resource settings. And I think many of the big companies also learned the same lesson. And some of those who made early investments and big investments in ventilators ended up with, uh, with stockpiles uh, that are now still sitting on the shelves that they're looking for something to do with. So again, I'm, this isn't like an official position. I'm not an expert on this. This is an insight I've had uh, coming into this space and I wanted to share it with you all and feel free to challenge it, take it, leave it. Uh, and lastly, just a, a big kudos to everyone and please keep up your passion and momentum and energy in this work because I think it's so important. That's all I have to say, thank you. Great, thanks, Florin. And um, yeah, great work you're doing with UNICEF. And yeah, if we can uh, get more people involved in that collab group, that would be uh, really interesting.